Hey guys, welcome to Wealthy. My name is Derek. I'm one of your hosts. I'm here with my lovely other host. Hi, I'm Hannah, the other host of this lovely podcast. The lovely host of the lovely podcast. Yes, I am. And yes, we are. We are wealthy. We are wealthy. Insert jazz hands. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. Well, guys, we got an awesome show today. Uh, we've put a lot of work into it. And I think it's going to be a good one. So I hope you're ready. We're just going to jump right into it, though. We don't want to do a lot of preamble, things like that. So today, our topic, if obviously you probably saw it in the uh, description when you when you clicked on this thing here. Is, what? Uh, it's not a, just a surprise Russian roulette know, of... We just put episode two. That's all you get. Or four, whatever the number is. Maybe we could do that. I mean, just kidding. I think people... Yeah. I would personally hate that. I, yeah, that would drive me nuts. <gasps> Tell I, me what I I'm going to get myself into. Right. So anyways... We are just going to talk today about getting started, uh, the wealth side of things. How do you get started on this journey to become wealthy? And, you know, guys, when we talk about wealth and, you know, that kind of things, we are talking the long lasting, healthy wealth, the do it right, do it the right way, do it the correct way, do it the lasting way. We are anti get rich quick, get fit quick you know, all of that kind of stuff. We are not about that. And let me jump in here and yeah. quickly say happy new year, you guys, 2019. Let's Crazy. do this. <laughs> um, yeah. So just like what Derek was saying with everyone in the entire world and their mom coming at you right now saying, Oh my gosh, forget about your resolutions. Get your six pack in six weeks. Your oh make your bank account have six zeros at the end. Buy my program. All the stuff. So we are so totally against that. And um, yeah, and this is an episode to tell you why we're against that. But I'm sure it'll be a running theme. This is the episode of, yeah, where to get started as far as your wealth goes. Maybe you set some intentions or resolutions for the new year and you are just wondering how you get started getting that bank account a little bit higher, where to put the extra money at the end of the month, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. And Derek is going to pretty much lead us today. I mean, of course, it'll be a discussion like normal. Yeah, but. we each have our specialties. In case you are a new listener with the new year, just super quick. Again, my name is Derek. I am a licensed professional in the financial industry and the investment industry. So that's where I come from. That's where my expertise and experience comes from. Um, I don't endorse any specific things or anything like that. Anything that I may talk about is not necessarily advice. So please don't take it such, you know what I mean? It's kind of a weird line that uh, both of us have to ride where we uh, could almost get in trouble sometimes if people take things a little too, like you specifically said to do this exact thing. Our advice is not one size fits all. We're no. talking from our, we're not, we have other places where we talk as a professional and we're able to you know, give people more specified advice for certain situations. Yeah, exactly. Derek is, a, he, he can't do that because of his licenses. He cannot tailor <laughs> advice to you. So unless he, you hire me and we have a one-on-one -on -one, exactly, exactly. over a podcast. Nope. <laughs> so he is graciously giving some of his personal ideas and things that have worked for him. So he is the wealth side of this podcast. I'm Hannah. I'm the other co-host. I focus on the wellness side of things. So health, fitness, and overall just living a well-balanced lifestyle with all of those wellness little facets tied in. Um, and so, yeah, I'm the wealth wellness side of it. And together we make wealthy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Derek, tell us how we can get started. 2019, it's a new year. It is a couple days into a brand new month. I know, you know, every Monday, every month, every new week, every year, people feel like they need to start over or they need to make these major changes. Um, talk to us about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's exactly what we're talking about. So um, getting started, guys, it's interesting in my line of work. Obviously, I talk to a lot of different people with a lot of different financial situations, you know, those ranging from the ultra wealthy, you know, they call and, hey, I need to move a million dollars like it's 20 bucks for them. You know, it's just it's insane. It's on a different and level. And the people moving $20 million. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, ah. it's 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 interesting and it's a, it's fun. I love to work with the different people I do work with. But then on the flip side of that, 
is that I also deal with people every day that may have $4.75 in whatever accounts they may have. And they want to argue with me over literally fractions of pennies that come through the way interest is accrued and things like that. So it's just interesting. The two kinds of people that I run into, right? And then the way they call in and the way they handle their finance. It's very interesting. They have something in common, but the way that it is in common is complete opposite. So let me jump into that because it's super weird. And, and I, it's just an observation I've made over the, the history of me and my, uh, and my work. So basically the way it works is that, um, these two people on these opposite ends of the spectrum, those ultra wealthy and the maybe not so much. And the people on the other end of that spectrum, both of these types of people, they track their money very closely, which makes sense, right? You think, Oh, if I have no money, yeah, every penny matters on the flip side. Well, if I have all the money, I probably have it for a reason because every penny matters, right? It sounds obvious, but it's interesting when you think about, they are complete opposite ends of the spectrum and yet they're, have that same mindset. So why are they in these different situations? And that's what I want to hit on first is that it's all about how you look at how you're tracking your money, I guess. And so let's roll back. So we've got those, like they can't afford that dollar 79 drink at, you know, their gas station drink They're they Or my, an example I always mm -hmm. think of when it comes to, Oh, do you want to splurge on something cheap is at the movie theater when they're like, do you want to go for an extra large for an extra 30 cents? <laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, never. No, absolutely not. I don't need an extra gallon worth of popcorn. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think that's the people you're talking about on the end of the spectrum where that dollar seventy nine, like your example, that hurts them. Like that's a that's a number that they're tracking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They're watching. They're the ones that call in over the fractions of pennies and but how they react to those and how they react to their money is where the true difference comes between these two types of people. So these people are always the victim. My money is lost. My money is stolen. My money is taken. My money left me. It's always these things like that. They call me and they say, not me personally, but they may say, hey, this person or that institution or whatever it may be. You took my money, stole my money, lost my money, things like that, right? And it's just so interesting because they're always the victim. It's never their own choice. There's never any responsibility about it. They took an uneducated action that had unexpected results and they're not happy about it. And it's hard because especially in my industry where it is so heavily regulated, a lot of it boils down to me reciting regulations to people saying – or such and such, such, you know, FINRA regulation, this is it. This is law or this is banking regulation. It is, you cannot do that. Well, you know, and they're always a victim of the system, right? So those are the people that are always struggling. They're never getting ahead. Their money is always somehow, quote unquote, leaving them, right? They just can't seem to hold on to it. Okay. Flip side of that, those ultra wealthy people that call in and they're always a pleasure to talk to. It's interesting. You would think that they would be, you know, big jerks and so pompous, but they're actually so nice and kind. It's really kind of a, a flip of what you would think the stereotype would be. But anyways, so they're just like the other person. They track every penny. They know where every dollar is. They know what their money is doing, but they're not victims. They're in control. And the big reason behind that control and where that comes from is that they know why their money is doing what it's doing. They know where it is, what it's doing and why it's doing that. And that gives them power over their money. That gives them that control over their money that they need. So I want you to think about it real quick. Just as you're listening to this guys, just think, well, who am I in this situation? And I think we're all a little bit of both. It depends on where we're at. We all have different strengths. You know, some people may say, well, I'm, I'm a, I'm a saver. I'm a natural saver. And so that's just what I do. I have control over my savings. I save every month. It's no big deal. I'm a boss, but then you don't know that on the flip side, it's, well, I never seem to understand why I get overdraft fees. Such a common thing, right? And we all know why we get overdraft fees because you're overdrawn. You don't have enough for the purchase you're trying to make, but it's little things like that where we maybe don't take that extra step. Well, well, how do I avoid of other than having enough money in my account? How do I avoid overdraft fees? You know, I mean, it's, it's a weird question to think, but it's a check the box 
on your account preferences and now you no longer get overdraft fees because they won't let the charge go through. It's stuff like that that puts you in control of your money where you stop being a victim yes. of the system of, well, why didn't they just not let it go through? That's an option. Use your brain, do some Googling, call customer service, say, hey, I was wondering if I could do this so that I stop getting $20 fees. Is that possible? And they'd say, yeah, definitely. I can change that for you right now. And you say, oh, can you do that? And they say, sure. And you're done. And that puts you that much of an increment ahead in taking control of your finances and moving from the wrong end of the spectrum to where we all want to be. Yeah. So instead of being a victim, actually, you know, use use the brain that you're using to do these goal setting things so that you know you want to be a wealthy person in the future. Start making those actions and maybe yeah, don't call yourself a victim and say, oh, my bank just has weird charges. Mm -hmm. They probably, I mean, maybe they do then look into switching banks, but yeah, it was amazing. I mean, we had a little time here in our newlywed years where we had overdraft <laughs> fees. I think everyone does. Yeah, for just, sure. I mean, lack of communication, thinking the checking account had way more in it than it did. So, I mean, we're not knocking anyone who has had overdraft fees or is living in that right now. We all go through different stages all. for sure. Yeah. So just keep that in mind, but um, you can get out of it and you don't have to lose that 20 bucks every time you get that. Huh, it's that, That's the worst feeling ever. I have probably never felt more guilty looking at our finances than when it was my purchase. That, oh, yeah. That was like maybe $3 over the amount that calls for an overdraft. Or it's an I'm unnecessary like, purchase. Exactly. You just think, no, especially when you're in a, a partnership, you're yes. in a relationship, you think, damn, like, I, you know, yeah. I, I've had that where it was, it was over a gas station drink or something dumb yes. like that, where it's just, ah, I stopped for gas. I wanted a treat. So I grabbed a, a protein bar and a drink at the gas station. And yep, that the vitamin water that was 179. Yep. Put me over. And now that all that cost me extra 20 bucks. Yep. It's and just it's like, you feel so dumb. Well, it feels so dumb. And then it's like, I hope I don't make it. So this person in my partnership makes it feel like they have to hold me accountable. Like I'm not right. this, I'm not this stupid. Like I promise I'm not. Exactly. So like, don't babysit me. Like I know, but just instead of having that be a concern, mm -hmm. Flip that little box or that little toggle no, thingy on your bank So many things settings. like that are that easy to just take that, those small things to get you control. Because if you think about it, guys, mm -hmm. if you can take these small actions, it allows you to free up your, your thoughts and your energies for the big actions, right? If you're not worried about getting overdraft fees, if you're not worried about, you know, your automated savings and things like that, if you can get all those little routine foundation baby steps done, then you'll be able to move on to the big steps of, okay, how am I going to invest for my retirement? You know, there's a reason why the majority of Americans nowadays have no retirement at all. They have no plan and they have less than a thousand dollars cash in their bank. It's, and, it's statistics. It's out there. It's crazy. And you can't blame the movie theater for charging you 30 cents more on your extra large popcorn. You made that choice, Billy. Like yeah, it's interesting. And weird side note, we've talked about this before, but let's throw this out there for people to learn. So, guys, in case you didn't know. Guys. Guys and girls and gals okay, and just, people. I, I just want to make sure it wasn't just unidentified like a gentlemen. Whatever. Listen. You know, okay. yeah. Any anyone out there listening, listeners, audience, uh, there is a system, a registry, a blacklist, basically, where you can get your name on this and almost no banking institution will accept you as a client, as a customer to have an account with them. So basically what happens is you get labeled as a person that, what is the exact, uh, it's basically mishandling of accounts is what you get labeled as a person that has a history of mishandling accounts at different financial institutions. So this is the permanent record we should have all been aware of and being warned of as we were growing up. Right. But I didn't even know about this until I get into it and I find, you know, I come across a person that's on this list and we have the awkward conversation of, hey, sorry, man, you just can't work with us at all. It's not anything really with you. It's this that you're on this list that someone, you know, somehow you got on this list and he didn't even know. He said, what? Are you serious? Like it was a complete surprise to him, which is crazy to me to think, wait, 
you didn't know? So that makes me think it's his crazy ex-girlfriend that worked at the bank. He was- <laughs> Who knows what it was, right? It could be any, oh, I, you know, I don't God. know the details, but anyway, I just want to throw that out there, guys. Like it, it can happen. It can be damaging, not so much to your like future goals, but like for your future period. Like mm-hmm. if you got on that list, like, I guess revert back to the last episode or one of our previous ones of, and then undo all of the advice Derek said about investing and just put your money in the mattress. That's where you're going to end up if you yeah. get on that list. So you're not going to earn any interest. It's not going to compound. Mm. Anyways, interesting episode. Go back to listen to that one. Anyways, guys, let's move on. So um, you've changed your mindset. You're no longer going to be a victim of your finances. You're no longer going to be a victim of the system and the banks and whatever's out there. You're going to take control and as you start to to develop this mindset of taking control of your finances and making educated decisions, you know, that's the thing. It's a decision. I chose to go here and I know why I chose to do this. That adds so much power behind it. Now, as you move forward into doing this, you're going to run into all these different maybe maybe new topics to think about, new concepts that you come into thinking about, you know, think about, oh, investing, right? Investing, I think, is this this word that is so misunderstood in the industry and in life that I want to go over that real quick with you guys. So you need to change the way that you think about the word investment because Hannah, without looking at our show notes, what, uh, if I say the word investment or investing, what do you think of? (sighs) Like what's the connotation, I guess. Um, in my mind, I think a lot of uneducated people assume that investing is a guaranteed way to get rich quick. Um, or it's just as it's either get rich quick, it's gambling, or it's just putting your money elsewhere. I think there are three kind of ways to think about it. Okay. So it's either like a, so you think of money making, whether it's super risky or on the opposite end guaranteed. Yeah. Or it's just kind of this weird, like unknown, like someone says like, oh, are you investing? It's like, I mm. investing in. Yeah, exactly. In Spotify. How monthly? am I yes, doing I this? Am. Right, exactly. People <laughs> don't really, was it saving? Is it, you know, people don't understand what it means. And I think that you need to first kind of change the way that you look at the word investing so that you can make it more personal because too many people think when they hear the word investing or investment, no stock market. And real estate, trusts, hedge fund, you know, all these kind of big nebulous things that really don't need to be an expert on at all to be successful with your finances. But you, you really should don't. be educated. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You need to know what you're going to do, but you don't need to know everything. Pay there's, someone to know everything. Yeah, exactly. There are people like me. There are people out there that you can go, they can know everything they can know. And they'll even, they'll specialize. That's the thing. They may not know everything, but that's why you go to them and say, Hey, this is me. This is what I want to do. This is what I can do. What should I do? And they say, do this because they specialize in that one thing. So, but when it comes to the word investment, guys, you need to start thinking of it in smaller and more personal terms. When you're saving money, for example, you know, investing comes more down to the sacrifice initially saying, I'm going to sacrifice something now so that I can have something more later. Call back to our episode on compounding. When we talk about the power of time, I'm going to have more later. The later is where the more can come in. So anyways, you need to think about it in this. Okay. If I give up a little bit or a lot, but I give up something now, I can have more of it later. Whether that comes through, I shop less, I go out to eat less, I do something less, I cut back somewhere that saves me money, I can put money away, right? Later, that that savings, it's going to grow, it's going to get some interest, it's going to allow you flexibility in the future, you know? It, the 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 quote-unquote, you know, sarcasm quotes, return on investing isn't always cash. You know, a lot of people don't realize that the sacrifices and investments you make in yourself, in your work, in your careers, in your finances, your education, things now, they, the return later can be time. 
you know, more time to be with your family, vacation, whatever it may be. It can be time. It can, it can be cash. It can be just flexibility in your lifestyle. It can be so many different things, flexibility in your peace of mind, your own wellness. Right. And people don't make that connection. They just think cash and investment, more cash, somehow magic in between that I don't understand. And maybe the money gods will bless me with somehow it happens to me, right? That's the victim mentality we're trying to get away from. That magic in between is education and learning and you saying- And action. And action, yes. It's saying, what do I want? Well, how do, how the heck do I get that? Oh, okay. I know how to get that. Do the thing I just learned I need to do. Get the thing. It's literally that simple. So- you need to change that mindset on investing. It's not some weird nebulous thing. It's something you can learn about. Just keep it specific to your situation. Don't try to go out there and learn everything. Don't try to learn again, the get, get rich quick stuff. Learn the basics, build from there. It becomes a natural thing where as you learn, you easily are able to weed out the things that are too good to be true. And you can start just, oh, okay, cool. I got down with my hundred bucks a month into my savings. Awesome. I'm, I'm a pro at that. I've got, I've learned how to make a budget and stick to a budget every month. I'm a pro at that. And I just want to jump in and say, yeah, like, if it. you're getting started and you listen to the podcast and you do save your first hundred bucks, please DM us so we can shout you out and yeah, celebrate seriously. you. Like if you said, tell us how it's helped you. Yeah. I mean, but not even that you don't need to toot our horns. We toot them enough plenty, mm. but <laughs> That was a cute toot. Um, but <laughs> no, just like DM us, make sure we're aware so we can celebrate you because every little step in the right direction is forward movement. And that's so worth celebrating. Sorry to jump on that. No, you're good. Yeah. I, I, I just, I just want to make sure rolling. Yeah, people know we're here. Well, no, and we would love to hear your personal experiences as well. You know, like we said, if you have questions, reach out to us. But again, if you just have comments, you want to say, hey, guys, I've been doing this. You're you're on or you're off or whatever and say, yes, I saved my hundred bucks a month and it allowed me to do this. Or I what is your goal right now? We want to know what you guys are trying to do out there so we can help you and offer our two cents. And so getting back to this whole investment, getting started thing, guys, let's kind of Let's get into more some specifics for you so that we are giving you some more practical step-by-step -step things that you can take in your life. You've changed your mindset and your attitude. Uh, you, you're ready to get going. You're feeling motivated, ready to rip, roar, jump into taking control of your finances, becoming this money master that you want to be. 2019 is the year to get rich. There yeah. you go. Just kidding. To, well, to start, <laughs> you never plant the seeds, they won't grow, right? Right. Okay. So- you're ready. You want to do it. Now what? What the heck are you supposed to do? So first thing you guys need to do again, just adjust your expectations and I making that personal. You need to adjust the expectations of yourself, of your lifestyle, of what kind of sacrifices you're going to have to make to accomplish what you want to do. So, for example, you need to expect to save more money, right? That's the biggest thing people don't realize is that they think, oh, well, spend money, make money. Yeah, that's true for very specific situations. But if you do that enough, you're not going to have any money to spend trying to make more money. It doesn't work just as this weird endless cycle, money in, more money out. It doesn't always work that way. Um, the best way to make money is to just not spend it, cut and dry. So... Adjusting your expectations of that means that if I'm saving more, I'm spending less. So look at your finances, look at your life. What is excess? Cut the fat, get it out. And you need to be aggressive about this, guys. I mean, you can't be soft about it. You can't, you know, oh, well, I really like this. I, okay, then pick something else, but something's got to go. That's it. Too many people try to out earn their bad spending habits. And we're going to have a whole thing on that, but just know you can't, can't out earn your bad spending habits. You can't out exercise your bad eating habits. It doesn't work, but I think it's almost like when you know, you need to clean your closet and it's at the point where it's been this daunting thing for months and you're, in, you're almost at the point where you want to call in 
other reinforcements. You're like, I need someone in here to help me clean so I can have like emotional detachment from the stuff I'm getting rid of. I mean, if that's the case, maybe have someone sit down with you and kind of hold you accountable as you go through your budget Mm -hmm. every month, like not every month, but just as we start a new year, your new monthly budget set for every month. Where do you have wiggle room? And can you call a trusted friend or a partner that says, dude, do you really need that? Like you, you really do need that subscription or you do need that. And I think subscriptions are a really sneaky way that you lose money. So sneaky. Um, Cause it's $5 here, $3 there, 1150 here and boom. Yeah. Adds up. Yeah, for sure. And it becomes a part of your daily life. You know, if you have a, you know, cable slash dish, you know, some kind of a TV service combined with, I also pay for Hulu and I also pay for Netflix and I also pay for, you know, Amazon TV or whatever. You, it becomes normal because you use it every day, right? It's just there. Like Hannah said, it's the $10 there, $20 a month here and there, but it adds up. And let's say that your total bills on all those, it comes out, Oh, it's only $50 a month for all those. Think of everything. I get the value. It's like, that's not the discussion that we're having right now. We're not talking about, do you get value? Is it quote unquote worth what you're paying? It might be, but your goal here is not justify your purchases with value. It's do I need this? Do I really, really need this? How often do I use it? What can I cut? What can I realistically comfort? Not, not even comfortably always, but just get rid of it, cut it out. And like Hannah said, I think it's, that's a fantastic idea to bring someone else in. If you need to, you know, they can be a great way to look at it and bring in that, all that honest friend. I think we all have that friend that just can just but, tell it like it but is. But not the friend that's a B or a D, you know, that's like, <laughs> Sometimes maybe necessary, I mean, but I think that the caveat that needs to be that they're to emotionally chastised. Like they're not going to call you it. I think everybody, out. I think you guys know what we're getting at. We're all <laughs> going to have someone a little different, right? I would, I would prefer someone to come in and slap me in the face and like, tell me, Hey, idiot. Are you seriously put it, putting that much money to this every month? Really? I remember that. Justify it. <laughs> tell, tell me why this is worth it. I would, if I was really going to take a hard look at my budget and my expenses and someone says, are you ser- seriously? I, and I would either, ju- I would have to justify that, right? And if you can't justify it to someone else, then you really shouldn't be justifying it to yourself, you know, and be smart about it and be honest about it. But like I said, asterisk, the caveat to this entire thing is that whoever, if you decide to bring in your reinforcements, make sure they're good with their money. Yeah. Don't bring in this person. It's, oh, they're great. They tilt like it is. They let, slept on a park bench last night. You know what I mean? Or, you know what I mean? You don't bring in the person that is obviously not good with their money. And this doesn't also mean, oh, well, I'm going to call the person with the nicest car I know. No. Um. Okay. The person that has all the fancy things now is probably not going to have anything later. Just saying a lot of times those people, they because they spend, 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 spend all their money right now. Because they're not saving any money now. And so in 40 years, yeah, I'm assuming someone's our age, right? If you're 50, that's different. But if you are, honestly, if you're under like 30 years old and you're not some weird special case, like I'm talking about the rule, not the exceptions here, you know, the trust fund people and the, you know, family money people. But if you're just a normal person out there struggling like the rest of us, just trying to do life. And you've got that one friend that always has the brand new phone, a new car every other year, a nice place. And you think, man, they must just be killing it. Like, are they? Maybe you want to look at their budget and that will give you inspiration and be like, oh, okay, I see. Yeah, you have lots of nice things now, but you are literally paycheck to paycheck. If you get fired, you cannot go another month. Yeah. And it's, yeah, trimming the fat of the things like, do you really need to get your nails done? again this month like Mm -hmm. maybe it would be better to go a couple months without and I mean of all the extra things that I really loved having done when I was getting them done I loved getting my nails done and I'm I'm not a girly girl by any means but my nail chick I'm just can I plug her I mean if you want to I mean we're not getting any kickback from it so just make it quick nail love by Kylie she's amazing she's local to Salt Lake go check her out if you're from Utah She's the best, but yeah, I mean, and then not at the same time to steer people away from her, (laughs) but 
it's che- yeah, checking in and really, mm-hmm. re- really trimming that fat. And it's finding the excess because we're not also we're not jumping in here to advocate that you should have no luxury in your life. You should live on a straw mattress on the floor of the local shelter, but still go. You know what I mean? Like, but are you saving money? Then you're doing it right. right yeah. yeah, it's guys. There's a balance. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with your budget, your life, everything. You don't need to go to crazy extremes. That's not what we're about. But we are in favor of living slightly uncomfortable and making some sacrifices to compound on that and get so much further ahead later in life. And it's living proportional to where you're at currently. Mm -hmm. Um, Like for us right now, we are living, we have certain luxuries, you know, we really love our cars and we live in a really crappy weather play, like place for weather. So we pay for car washes every month. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's a luxury that we can afford right now. And, but if you let those little luxuries be justified over and over and they right. grow, you are not, you're only going to be limited to this life and these small luxuries forever. Or if you just have that little bit of sacrifice, a little bit of uncomfortability, you, the more money you have and the difference you make, it's proportionate to the luxuries you'll be able to have. Maybe it won't be quantitative, but it will be quality. Like they will be quality luxuries. Yeah, exactly. And if you really wanted to sum it up, Hannah and I definitely live by the live below your means lifestyle. We very much try to live within that mindset of just because we earn X doesn't mean we need to spend X. It's we live a lifestyle so that at the end of the month we have extra. And that is where we just have extra for, yeah, the weird unexpected things like our dog has to go to the vet weirdly a lot this month. <laughs> so cool. We it doesn't have to come out of a savings or an overdrawn account or credit cards. It's we have wiggle room built into our budget on purpose. And if at the end of the month there are no weird expected things, whoosh, off to the savings, off to investments, off to build more. So that's it, guys. Live within your means. Cut the fat. Get it out there. Be aggressive about it. Be honest with yourself. Make sure it is realistic and sustainable sacrifices. Do not decide, I'm so pumped right now. I'm going to live off of ramen and hot dogs the rest of my life. Don't do that because you won't be able to keep doing it. And if you do, it won't be a quality life. Last time I'm going to say it, be honest with yourself. Moving on. (laughs) I wish you could have all seen the hand gesture. <laughs> all, all sorts of gestures going on right now. Oh, man. I've got all the gestures. Don't worry about it. We just, we'll, Maybe we'll start filming these for people to just watch. I don't yeah. know. Picture this as you hear Derek say, moving on. And it's, I don't know. It's like a shot. Like a, don't try. It's too, it was too great. To, hand it was too glorious to. <laughs> forward. You know, the American sign language sign for, I can't remember if it's fish or snake but the single handed. So imagine that hand movement just going straight out from his chest or from his armpit. It's very, yeah. Moving on oriented. Okay. And now we're moving on. We are moving on. Let's do it. (laughs) So you've set the right expectations. You, you know what you can do realistically. You have decided where to cut the fat out of your budget. Now make a game plan. This We're going to rip through this pretty quick because I do want to do more an episode and have Hannah and I kind of break down how we budget because we do budget as a couple. I think we do it very well, actually, for a couple where it's very shared responsibilities and things like that. And I think that would be very helpful for people out there that are wondering, well, you know, I do all the budgeting and he slash she just never really gets it and always is spending or it's just all these problems that come up. Hannah and I have really learned how to work around those and fix those in a way that both of us feel as if we are co-owners, shared responsibility. We're both carrying the weight. We're both aware of spending and things like that. So we'll go over that more in depth. But real quick, guys, you do need to have a game plan. You need to have some kind of a budget that you are cutting things from. So it is great that you decided, okay, I'm cool. I'm going to cut out car washes or I'm going to cut out nail appointments. And just to jump in, Mm -hmm. if the word budget feels like a four-letter word to you or makes you want to vomit and feel like it's 
you know, something your mom has talked about or that's going to make you live on ramen. You need to budget. Yeah. That's how you make a game plan. If you don't have a budget, but you're wanting to eventually be in a different wealthiness aspect, then you need to budget. Budgeting is the only way to move forward from here. There's no way to bypass a budget. If you want to call it something different, sure, go for it. But it just needs to get done. You, you simply have to, put, you need to make that game plan. Yeah, you have to have some kind of written down limit of what you spend on different things every month. Yeah. So avoiding the nail appointments, maybe taking away the car stuff. Uh, what Where were we going with that? Just that it's great that you're going to have this extra money, but you need to know what you're going to do with it Yeah. now that you have it. Because if not... From personal experience, and we can all relate to this. Oh man, I've got this extra hundred bucks left over. Well, I had my on this other thing that's not car washes, it's not nail appointments. Maybe I'll go spend it on that instead. I've done that because you get the extra money somehow and you end up sacrificing, just go waste it on something else. That's not the point. And if you don't have a plan pre pre decided, you can't wait. Oh, once I get the money, I'll decide that will not work. Don't do that. Decide now. All the decisions are now. <laughs> you just have to say this is what it's going to be even if it's savings that's great cool maybe you don't have some master game plan for your whole life right now fine you don't need one right this second you'll get one eventually so if you don't know what to do with it the plan default savings save 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 put it away and if you have a default plan or if you've made a decision that makes it all the more easy to avoid temptations when they do come up mm-hmm. you know it's like you you're holding yourself accountable. You're looking yourself in your goals saying, is this little hundred dollar thing worth it? Or should I save that? You know, and it's it's kind of this weird, weird thing when you when the item does win or your temptation wins or your weakness. Um, but it's also cool when your your goals win and your what you've decided wins. And then Make that a habit. Have you ever had the inner wrestling of, oh, I need to save this. I I know I should save this money, but I really wanted the thing. And then you buy the thing and then you regret it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I, I try. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, unfortunately I can. Yeah, live through example on that one. I think sure. we've all been there. Yeah. Where it's you buy the thing and you're holding it in your hand and you're like, this was not worth it. You're like, this may be worth the, you know, $100 or whatever, but it's not worth the $100 plus the guilt I feel knowing that I kind of broke this promise to myself. That I sold out. Yeah. Yeah. So have your game plan, guys, and you need to be setting big goals, uh, big goals and break it down into smaller ones. You know, you can your big goal can be I want to have ten thousand dollars in savings. That can be a massive goal. Uh, it could be I want to pay off student loans. It could be I want to pay off cars, houses. I want to save for when we have a baby or, you know, whatever. It could be anything. Set the big goal. And then these small, the cutting back and putting into savings, these small daily, you know, monthly actions, that's what's going to build into the ability to do that. And that is your, that's your why that gives you this huge thing about, you know, I can do this. It's not impossible. Um, And like I said, it can flip from I'm saving every month and building cash to I have a huge mountain of debt. You know, I think sadly that is more, probably more the case in America right now than not fine throw that money at that attack your debt go crazy on it so that you can get to the other the good side of the coin and build a mountain of wealth Mm -hmm. right but you're never going to be able to get into the positive with that giant negative looming over your shoulder true you know attack it hate it be this debt is my arch nemesis and I will destroy it like whatever you have to say to yourself but it's okay to be aggressive about you. It doesn't have to be this thing where it's just like, if someone to ask, you know, oh, how's it going? You know, like, oh, you just graduated. Cool. Like, man, I have got student loans. How about you? And you can be like, yeah, but those mother effers, like they're going down. Like I am saving like a madman and people may be like, oh, wow. You know, that's okay. You are intense, but you know, on the inside, they're like, that is great. You know, they are 
they'll want to be like you and they may, you might inspire them, you know, and they might come to you and be like, Hey, you said that you're like attacking your debt. What are you doing? You know, like, how are you doing it? Because I'm struggling. And then you can in turn be the teacher, which that is a huge goal that we want people. We want you guys to be able to, you know, help everyone else and spread the, uh, spread the knowledge, spread the love. Yeah. Love that. Did you have something you wanted to say? No. Oh, I don't know. You're like flashing gang signs at me and stuff. I can't read neon orange highlighter. On a neon green yeah. <laughs> sticky note. That was, a- was like, I don't, okay, throw some smoke signals my way. You can read those though. I cannot read those. You're a Boy Scout. Okay. Oh, smoke signals? Yeah, 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 totally. I thought I said smoke signals. <laughs> um, so that's, that's pretty much it, guys. You really just have to change your mindset and make a plan and just move forward and be consistent and take action on that plan. Uh, for example, you know, Hannah and I, we identified a weakness in our budget this year coming into 2019. We identified kind of a spot that we could tweak and work around and figure out that just wasn't working. We said, you know, are we really spending that much? And for us, it was food every month. There's a combination of groceries and eating out. And so we had a discussion about it. We kind of, we both identified, Hey, are we really, you know, yeah, I can't believe that. Is that serious? I mean, yeah. Well, what are we going to do about it? So Hannah, what, I mean, we don't have a concrete, like this is the person we're going to, I guess, but we have a plan. What's our, our, our plan. So the whole issue, why we were eating out so much was just because of both of our workloads. Like neither of us had time to cook. Um, I mean, I'm working five jobs. Derek is working one, but it's a full-time job. Um, so neither of us had the time to be able to be home cooking and take the preparation it we want and need in our diets. So we were eating out. And then we would supplement with you know, going to the groceries and we had a lot of holiday parties, you know, so lots of just buying groceries for weird, inefficient and unplanned things. So that just added up a ton. So what we decided to do was make it really efficient. And I mean, I think our plan is to do like a meal planning service, right? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So where they pre-make our meals and we pay for an X amount of meals each week and you know, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than our grocery budget for a while, but it will cause us to not have to eat out. So if we were almost to combine the two right. small budgets of eating out and uh, grocery shopping, that we will be saving more money or be able to put that elsewhere in our budget. You know, even if that budgeted item is just to save more at the end of the month. But yeah, that feels pretty good to have an answer. I was just willy nilly there for a little bit. Oof. Yeah. Like Hannah said, I think we were both just, and everyone can relate so busy. I don't have time to figure it out. I just kind of need to, I have this much money for food a month, whether it was groceries or eating out. And I think that's kind of where we landed was, well, we just kind of combined them in mentally anyway, saying we have money for food. And as we needed groceries, we bought them, you know, as we had time to cook, we would buy a little bit here and there, but then every trip, you know, you end up with a little extra things or for us, our Achilles heel was ice cream, you know, at least we're shopping at a cheaper grocery store. Yeah. That helped a lot. But at the same time though, it was just, I think we both looked at that number in our budget and said for two people with no children, (laughs) how are we spending this much money? And we're not 900 pounds each. Yeah, exactly. And we're both, and, and with my like intermittent fasting, it's not like we're, you know, I don't eat breakfast. You rarely eat breakfast. So it's just anyways, guys, that's, that's a real world example where even us ourselves are able to identify some excess or a, an imbalance and inefficiency in our budget. And that's a huge example of Mm -hmm. our budget. I mean, we've, we pretty much monthly assess and reassess of where we can trim the fat and where we can, you know, not splurge, but where we can add a little bit more, you know? So 
It's yeah, nice. Every and month has a little different challenge, so we tweak it a little bit. And it's really good to have a plan. And the more you budget and the more, I guess I should say, the more consistently you budget, the easier it is to anticipate future things, you know, mm-hmm. of like how much something will actually cost, and what you'll have to budget for that. So, yeah, definitely just make sure this episode, you know, adjust your expectations, trim the fat, make a game plan or a budget if you don't gag at that word. And then just remember to keep it simple and to make it easy for yourself. And yeah, yeah, just know that we're here supporting you every step of the way. And for anyone, this might be a fun little tidbit that we'll talk more about in our budget episode, but just interesting that Hannah is actually the person that makes the budget in our household. She, I'm the budget Lord. <laughs> yep. She, but you know, she's, I'm the, Oh, finance wizard guy, but she's the one that actually sits down, looks at our finances, looks at what we have coming up for the month, what we've been spending, what we can spend, how much we're going to make. She runs the numbers herself and she does it and, and moves things around and, and does that tweaking. I just come in after the fact and I just help. I'm just here as a reference for her and as a, we a partner that we month track our expenses. Yeah, exactly. We track our expenses. We stay on top because we're in control. We know exactly where the money's going so we can see it. We're both accountable for what we spend. But yeah, I just thought it was interesting to throw out there that all the people out there that might think that, you know, I set the budget and Hannah abides. No, it's a it's a team effort where Hannah sets the budget and I can tell her, hey, babe, I've got a car service coming up. That's going to be a weird expense this month. So can we throw X amount of dollars in there for that? And she says, yeah, yeah, definitely. And then she goes in and we'll add that and make adjustments. So just, you know, it's not this is not because I'm like good at it. You know, I mean, I'm good at it because of practice, but I'm also very organized almost. To she is very default. organized. So mm-hmm. you should see how many categories our budget has. But it's nice, though, because we know exactly not just miscellaneous. It, yeah, it, no, no, it gets broken way more down and it is nice. It gives us a much more in-depth view. And uh, yeah, no, it, it's and it's great. We'll talk about it. Loads we will. More we'll get more we into the, the, the thing. And I think it'll be a great episode for people that have shared budgets. So, yeah, but that's it, guys. I hope you got something out of the show. Um, we are going to do other getting started and things like that in future episodes. But for now, if you have questions that may have come up that we didn't answer, shoot us an email at wealthy podcast at gmail.com just w-e-l-l-t-h-y uh, we have twitter as well you can shoot us a tweet uh it's it's just at wealthy podcast yeah just at wealthy podcast or personally we have our social media i ha- i'm simple with mine i'm just at Derek spawn on instagram and i'm simple with mine as well because mine is just health by hannah which is my brand name (laughs) but i don't have websites and multiple instagrams okay just find me on instagram (laughs) and we can go from there you guys but actually i want to just launch a impromptu challenge not really a challenge but if you listen to this episode i want you to tweet and tag us in your tweet or i'm still learning the lingo for twitter twitter's new to both of us but so (laughs) Twitter us. At, um, Twitter, tell us Twitter your favorite us. little thing you learned this episode or yeah, your favorite awesome. little tidbit. Um, tweet us, tag us, hashtag episode, whatever this is. <laughs> and thanks, you guys. We love you tons. That's it, guys. Take it easy. Have a good night. Keep it wealthy. Bye.